Hello, welcome to the Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, and today I'm here to tell you the story about Flat Stanley. It was mid-October when Stanley arrived in the mailbox at the Straw Family Farm. It was so windy and dust was blowing everywhere off the gravel road. It was the first time Stanley was thankful that he was locked inside a mailbox while he waited to be picked up. He didn't have to lo wait long though, because Christy came right out and got him, giving the mail lady a wave. They went straight inside and got Stanley out of his envelope. He was surprised to find four dogs and a pig all eating breakfast in the house. RJ was busy switching his boots after doing the morning chores, but he soon joined in on the breakfast fun. Stanley got something to eat too. After all, it had been a long trip to get to the farm. After everyone got breakfast, the pig and two dogs were put outside. Then RJ said he had a gift for Stanley. As Stanley opened the box, he found a real live cowboy hat and bandana. RJ then explained that in the winds of the Oklahoma prairie, everyone needed a good cowboy hat to keep their hair out of their eyes and the sun and rain off their face. The pri With pride, Stanley popped his new hat on his head. RJ also told how it in the harsh winds, every cowboy needed a bandana to put over his mouth and nose so that the wind wouldn't choke him up. Without another thought, Stanley tied his new bandana around his neck so he'd be ready when he went outside. Just then, Christy piped up and asked RJ if he wanted to show Stanley around the farm and introduce him to some new friends. With that, RJ grabbed Stanley and they were out the door. Soon, Stanley found out that there are lots and lots of animals on this farm. RJ and Christy took time to introduce Stanley to each one. It was hard to remember everyone's name at first, but most were so friendly they didn't really care what you called them. Not all the animals wanted to be friends with Stanley, though. Some didn't want anything to do with him. Christy said it was because they'd never seen anyone so flat before. When Mr. Zebu was introduced to Stanley, he learned that Mr. Zebu would eat grass from Christy's hand, but he wanted nothing to do with Stanley. Mr. Zebu snorted and stomped at Stanley, but Christy said it was just because the wind made Stanley flap around a lot, and that scared Mr. Zebu. That was okay, though, because Stanley was a bit scared of Mr. Zebu, too, so Stanley was more than happy to admire him from the fence. After all the fun Stanley had meeting everyone and learning his way around, it was time for evening chores and dinner. After dinner, there was time to sit and chat while Christy and RJ worked on some inside projects. RJ was oiling up an old saddle right in the front room while Christy worked on a hat she was crocheting. Soon, everyone headed off to bed. Stanley thought Christy and RJ went to bed early, but they explained to Stanley that each day they had lots to do. So they said Stanley would need all the sleep he could get to make it through the day. They don't take naps around here. Stanley shared RJ's room and fell asleep in the comfy bed they had made up for him and he as he dreamed of being a cowboy. The next morning started like the one before. Everyone got up and started the day with chores. On the Straw Family Farm, all the animals get to eat before the people do. Hank and Jethro, the outside dogs, come in and eat, while Buttercup, the pig, and the two inside dogs enjoy breakfast as well. As Christy flutters around doing dishes, laundry, sweeping, mopping, and any one of the many other chores she does while she feeds the indoor animals, RJ heads out to the barn and feeds and hays all the animals outside. Each day, breakfast is followed by Christy informing RJ and Stanley about the work list for the day, and everyone heads out to start the day's tasks. The list changes each day, and things get crossed off as they're done. At this time of year, everyone on the farm is getting ready for winter. Christy has a clipboard with a long list of things that need to be done before the wild winds switch to the north and winter weather sets in. Christy explains that October is what they call a work month on the farm. They don't give many tours and have very few visitors to the farm so they can fix things, add new things, get the animals bred, 
and just get settled in for the winter. There's firewood to chop and repairs that have to be made, and poor Stanley knows that each day they work, they work in a lot of wind. Stanley gets a lot of use out of his hat and bandana. On one particular day, everyone worked to get the new fences up. Stanley and Christy spent the morning gathering supplies. Christy took Stanley to town where their first stop was at the lumber yard to get fence posts. The next stop was the local farm store. There they got tea posts and concrete. It was fun for Stanley and he even got to ride on a forklift that loaded everything into the old work pickup. On the way home, Christy and Stanley stopped by the grocery store for what Christy said was an easy lunch. They picked up meat for sandwiches and cookies and some pop to drink. Christy said it was a, wasn't a very healthy meal, but it was one that was easy to feed in the field where they'd be working. And pop is cheap, so if it gets spilled, no big deal. At lunch, Stanley found out that he liked pop. But Christy wasn't sure she should have let St Stanley have so much as he started to run around and act like a wild man. He tried to unload the heavy rolls of fencing, but he was too little, so it didn't work. He just got in RJ's way and <coughs> almost got flattened again. Then he tried using the post hole diggers and he was too short, so that didn't work. Stanley did get to help measure the holes, so that made him happy, but he still ran around wanting to do more. After that, Christy was sure to keep the pop away from Stanley. Most days were pretty routine on the farm. Chores, breakfast, work, lunch, roping, and dinner before having some downtime to chat before bed. Other days, there were odd things that would happen on the farm, and everyone would stop what they were doing and take care of it. Like once, Durf the horse broke through his gate, so Stanley and RJ took time to put Durf up and fix the gate. Durf is Fred spelled backwards. Durf is a really cool horse. He let Stanley pet him and everything, but Stanley was a little sad that he didn't get to ride Durf. On another day, after the work was done, Christy and RJ took Stanley to the arena. There, RJ had all the horses haltered and ready to teach Stanley to ride. The horses were very big, and with the wind blowing, Stanley, Stanley soon found it was really hard to hold on. He would have both hands full of the horse's mane but he still seemed to flap around a lot. That day, Stanley even got to ride a wild Mustang. There are two on the farm, but only Star is big enough to ride. Kavayu still has some growing to do. Stanley's favorite horse to ride, however, is named Coop. She had a saddle and bridle on and seemed to like giving Stanley pony rides around the farm. Stanley was able to hold on better when he rode on Coop, so he didn't blow away as much either. The funniest thing that Stanley got to ride was Bidet. She is a cow. RJ has had her since she was a baby, and she drank a baby bottle. She is really sweet, but RJ still had to help Stanley stay on her back because there isn't even a mane to hold on to when you ride a cow. Stanley really wanted to ride a longhorn cow, but Snapdragon turned out to be one of those animals on the farm that didn't really take to flat Stanley. Poor Stanley. He really did try to make friends with her. Each day on the farm, there is always a lot to do. One of those things is to milk the goats. Holly the goat was so nice that she let Stanley learn to milk her. Another job that had to be done on the farm 
was new barbed wire had to be strung. This was another job that Stanley felt left out of because he was too small to even lift the heavy spools of wire. But Christy made Stanley feel better by giving him an important job, the job of driving the truck. It was Stanley's first time driving. It was a good thing that he was in the pasture because learning to drive straight is harder than it looks. Stanley was so enjoying his stay on the farm, even with all the hard work to be done. That is, until the night of the big storm. <clears throat> Storms on the prairie are such a beautiful sight, and Stanley had never seen anything like it. The sky was flashing with huge lightning bolts in the distance, and the thunder could be heard booming for miles and miles. It was so flat on the prairie that you can see the storms miles away before they even get to you. Christy says it gives her time to batten down the hatches. She says that while the storms kind of look like other storms, the prairie winds make them more dangerous as they bring tornadoes to the farm. With the north wind trying to blow in and the south wind trying to hang around a bit longer, the two winds dance and twirl at times and can get pretty scary. One night, a very big black cloud blew in as everyone on the farm finished up their work for the day. At dinner, there was talk about who would wa keep watch and if they thought the weather would get really bad or not. It was all kind of scary to Stanley. Christy told him not to worry, that she was sure it would just be an everyday storm and not anything more. As Stanley drifted off to sleep, thoughts of the storm, wind, and tornadoes filled his head. Before he knew it, it was morning and the storm had passed. The morning started like every other. Stanley woke up to Christy buzzing around the kitchen doing this and that. RJ was already outside trying to get the morning chores done when all of a sudden RJ burst through the door yelling for everyone to come quick. Before Stanley could figure out what was going on, everyone was out the door. When they stopped and looked around, it was a terrible sight to see. There were huge limbs lying on the ground and debris laying everywhere. The barn was still standing, so everyone thought that was a good thing. Then Christy went to calling all the animals up to make sure everyone was okay. At the pig pen, Buttercup could be heard, but no one could see her. Then RJ noticed that the pile of firewood that had been chopped for winter was a mess. And as they got closer, they could hear Buttercup's cries for help get louder and louder. Then they found her. It was horrible. Buttercup was trapped under the pile of wood. Christy, RJ, and Stanley all started digging and throwing wood every which way. Finally, they got to the bottom of the pile, and Buttercup seemed just fine except for one little thing. Like Stanley, she was now flat. Thankful that Buttercup was okay, Christy put her in the house to eat and set out searching for the other animals. Next, she headed to the goat pen. She called and most of the goats came running. She looked around and couldn't see Holly. Christy listened really hard and called again. She was sure she heard her. That is when Christy noticed the shade walls on the west fence had blown down in the storm. Christy yelled for RJ and Stanley, who came running right away. They lifted up the wall, and that is when they saw her. Holly let out a bath, jumped up, and ran off to the milk stand like nothing happened. However, Christy, RJ, and Stanley couldn't believe their eyes. Holly didn't realize she was flat, too. After that, Christy and Stanley went to milk Holly, while RJ headed out to the stalls to check everything there. As he moved from pen to pen, he saw little things that had blown down, but nothing too bad until he came to Coop's stall. When he opened the gate and looked around, he found that the entire wall of the west side of her pen had blown down. All he could see was Coop's friendly face, so he grabbed the wall, and with one big heave, he lifted it off her. She got to her feet in no time and went to her trough to see if RJ had brought her breakfast yet. RJ stood there shaking his head as he noticed that Coop was much thinner now too. Even she was flat.
As they made their way around the farm, they soon found everyone but Bidet. For hours they looked and looked, but no one could find her. Christy and RJ got upset, but soon realized that they had to go tend to the damage and the other animals. Christy cried for a while as she worked to fix fence and hammer back up stalls. As more of the farm got cleaned up, they soon realized that the road had washed out too. They called the county workers who sent big road graders and rollers to fix it. As the last of the damage was repaired and the sticks and firewood were all picked up, one of the county workers came over to where everyone was standing. He had a frown on his face and seemed a bit sad. RJ noticed first and asked if something was wrong. The county worker said he didn't want anyone to be mad at him, but there had been an accident while they were fixing the road. Christy asked what he meant, and he explained that the roller had accidentally run over a cow. As everyone turned around, they saw Bidet standing by the roadside. Everyone was super happy and ran over to love on her. She was no worse for wear, but she too was now really flat. <sighs> by this time, RJ and Christy were back to their normal, happy, smiling selves. They spent the bigger part of the day cleaning the farm and putting things back to the way they were before the storm. However, the story was far from over. They soon realized that they had to find some new accommodations to keep Buttercup, Holly, Coop, and Bidet safe. At first, no one gave it any thought, and they just put them back in their old pastures. But soon, the flat animals struggled to fit back into their herds. Each animal had a different issue to deal with. And as it all unfolded, Christy, RJ, and even Stanley found that a farm was no place for flat animals. First, the wind came up like normal. But this time, poor Buttercup, whose pen was on the north side of the house, found herself fighting harder than ever to not get blown away. She held on with all of her might. But in the end, if it hadn't been for Christy running out and snatching her up, she would have blown away for sure. Christy took her in the house to keep her safe, but Moose, the inside dog, was having none of that. So, for the time being, Buttercup had to be put in the kitchen pen. It wasn't that big, but for the time being, it would have to do. Meanwhile, Holly was having her own issues. You see, the other goats thought Holly was something paper, and were trying to eat her. She kept having to run from the whole herd. They just wouldn't leave her alone, and all they wanted to do was nibble on her. Soon she was out of breath and couldn't find a place safe from both the wind and the herd. Within minutes, RJ showed up and took her inside as well. The pen in the kitchen was small, but it was the only place safe for a flat goat and a flat pig. The only thing they had to be careful of was the wind from the back door. Each time it opens, Holly and Buttercup would have to hold on to the sides of the pen. For the most part, everyone thought things would work out. That is, until RJ went to ride. He saddled up Coop, and while he had to make some adjustments to her tack, everything seemed to be fine. He took her down in the pasture to bring up the cattle so he could rope. And that was when he got concerned. But Day wasn't with the herd. They were all in the back corner, down in the draw, hunkering down from the wind. But she was nowhere to be found. He took off in a lope, calling and searching. The problem is that it is hard to see a flat cow. Unless Bidet turned sideways, she couldn't be seen. And it also led to complications with the herd. Bidet's legs just couldn't cover as much ground as the other cattle, so she couldn't keep up. She struggled and struggled, but she was worn out before she could catch up, and by then it would be time for them to come back to the arena for roping. Poor Bidet, she was tired and left behind. So RJ scooped her up and tucked her in his pocket and gave her a ride to the house as they rounded up the cattle. When he got to the house the, and explained the problem to Christy, she said to put her in the in with the others in the kitchen pen. Man, was that pen getting full. But the Straw Family Farm really had no other choice 
as there was nowhere else to put a flat herd that was safe from the other animals and the wind. RJ left Christy and Stanley in the kitchen trying to figure out somewhere else to put them all. He headed back to the arena where he got ready to rope. He does his best thinking when he is roping. So he herded the cattle through the chute and back coop in the box. With a nod of his head and a jerk of the rope, the first calf ran straight as an arrow out into the arena. Coop shot out of the box and was right behind him. RJ swung his rope and it fell perfectly around the calf's neck. However, this is where everything went wrong. Coop tried to stop, but the wind came up and started to blow and it pushed her to the calf. RJ was already in mid dismount and he went face down in the dirt. The calf kept running and Coop was way too thin to stop him. RJ was dusting off when he realized just how much trouble Coop was in. He ran and grabbed Whiskey and headed to help Coop. Whiskey caught up with Coop in no time and RJ got that calf roped and tied down in the nick of time. Coop was very hot and sweaty and she was very tired as she had tried to do her job but just couldn't get it done now that she was flat. Once RJ had the situation under control in the arena, he took the saddle and tack off of Coop. He headed to the house with his head hung low. The minute Christian Stanley saw him, they knew something went wrong. RJ explained that since Coop was now flat, she couldn't hold the kef for RJ, and that means that they couldn't rope together anymore. Christy told RJ it was okay and to just put her in the pen with the animals inside the kitchen and they would figure something else out. That is when Flat Stanley piped up. He had what he thought was a brilliant idea. You see, Stanley knew where there was a homestead that had an empty trailer that they used to use for bunnies. Now they have the bunnies in burrows outside. So he thought that the empty trailer would make a perfect place for Bidet, Coop, Holly, and Buttercup. They could close the door and be safe from the other animals and the wind. With the new plan, everyone got to work. First thing Monday morning after breakfast, Flat Stanley, Flat Coop, Flat Bidet, Flat Holly, and Flat Buttercup all loaded up in an envelope and set out for a crazy adventure that they liked to call homesteading. They were on their way to the Willow Creek Homestead in Idaho.